It is wild to me that this has been in space not once, not twice, but 39 times. Jeff Bezos could never. <laughs> In our last video, we visited the Futures exhibit at the Smithsonian Arts and Industries Building on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Today we're exploring the Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center, which is home to some of the most famous aircraft in the world. The Udvar-Hazy Center has hundreds of planes, small planes, large planes, military planes, and even spacecraft. Join us as we take you through some of the highlights of this museum. To set the record straight, there are two different air and space museums in the DC metro area. One is the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, located on the National Mall in Washington, DC. And the other is the Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center, which is in Chantilly, and that's where we are today. Even though the one in DC is probably the most well-known, I prefer this one because it's massive. It is over 760,000 square feet. You cannot fit that anywhere on the National Mall. <laughs> hey, this is me editing after the fact, but if you're looking at this and thinking, why is the video quality so poor? It's because the lighting at the udvar Hazi Center is really dim and equipment just like, isn't meant to handle that type of lighting. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, back to the video. Our first plane just may be the most controversial plane in this whole museum. This Boeing B-29 Super Fortress bomber, the Enola Gay, was the first aircraft to drop an atomic bomb in warfare. During World War II, it dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan in 1945. This killed up to 80,000 people. Because of this, lots of people protested the exhibition of the Enola Gay. Despite the protest, the Enola Gay debuted at the Udvar Hazy Center in 2003. Next up is one of the fastest and loudest planes in the entire world. Take it from my personal experience. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird is a long-range, high-altitude aircraft that can go up to 2,200 miles per hour. In 1976, the Blackbird flew at an altitude of over 85,000 feet, breaking a world record. That was so high up that the pilot could see the Earth's curvature. We actually got to hear one of these Blackbirds in action when we were in Cleveland at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There just so happened to be this big air show happening around the same time, and one of those Blackbirds took off, and I swear to you, it was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, you really just got to trust in these wires that hold up the planes. Just hope and pray that these do not fall down. So this is new. They have volunteers here working virtually that you can actually talk to in real time. I guess you can never call out sick though, huh? Yeah, there's no excuse whatsoever if you're working at Ubar Hazi. We talked to one of these volunteers as we visited the Discovery Space Shuttle. We learned that the Discovery went to space 39 times, making it the world's most flown space shuttle. Big enough to carry a city bus, the Discovery's primary function was to carry cargo into space, like telescopes and satellites. Only about seven people would ride in the Discovery per mission. One of those people was John Glenn. Discovery is the only shuttle ever to fly one of the Mercury 7, NASA's first astronaut class, which was chosen in 1959. The Discovery carried John Glenn in 1998 when the astronaut was 77, 
which at the time made him the oldest person ever to reach space. So last time I was here about 10 years ago, I saw Brian Williams interviewing John Glenn. And here are some very grainy photos taken on my iPhone 4 in 2011 when I saw Brian Williams interviewing John Glenn. Actually, Brian wanted to interview me as well, but I had a prior engagement, so I couldn't make right. the time. He's so busy these yes. days. As we made our way through the museum, we saw this weird thing, which we thought looked like one of those Cyclone arcade games. But it's actually a balloon gondola built by Julian Knott in 1979. He designed and built the first hot air balloon with a pressurized gondola, allowing him to reach an altitude of over 55,000 feet. There's no way that's a real plane. And someone actually flew that. A man named Robert H. Starr did actually fly this plane in air shows in the 1950s. It was built by Ray Stitz at his home in California. It's only 9 feet in length and went up to 80 miles per hour. That little Sky Baby plane looks so small when you compare it to the Concorde. The Concorde was one of the fastest planes on Earth and could carry up to 100 passengers across the Atlantic in less than four hours, half the time of a conventional jet airliner. But it was super expensive and a horrific crash in 2000 dwindled its popularity. All Concords were retired in 2003. The Udvar Hazy Center is next to Dulles International Airport. There is an observation deck that takes you to the seventh level of this museum where you can see some planes take off. Anyone there? What? <laughs> <laughs> You could easily spend hours at the Uvar Hazy Center, and it's worth the trip out to Chantilly, especially if you have a long layover at Dulles International Airport. Next time, we'll take you to one of the best hidden gyms near Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.